Hello, David. Hi, how are you? I'm all right, thank good. you. Not good, bad good. for a Wednesday. Good. Um, we have got together to talk about community learning and the future of community learning. Um, and obviously we see each other regularly, but uh, through the work I've been carrying out um, recently in terms of the position NIA set out for a radical new vision for community learning um, in advance of the spending review, uh, there were some questions that I particularly thought as Chief Executive that I'd yep. like you to, to respond to. Um, so in terms of the spending review, at the end of the month, uh, we obviously as NIA set out the radical new vision, we were talking about the possibility of a National Community Learning Trust, a complete reconfiguration um, in terms of how that uh, resource is redistributed. So what do you think will happen? in the spending review? Well, it's a big question, isn't it? So, um, I, nobody knows really. I suspect even George Osborne doesn't know what's going to happen to community learning. But um, I, I think we've got to be worried. I think there are real concerns about um, community learning. I don't think it's fully understood. I don't think, um, from my experience in um, previous organisations, you know, skills funding agency and so on, every time we came to a spending review, people said, well, what's it for? And we had to explain it again and again. And I, and I think part of our vision was saying having a national learning trust, community mm -hmm. learning trust, would help provide that certainty about what it was for and what it was about. So I think it's, there, there are big risks around. Um, we're still fighting for it. I think there are people who, um, in biz and other places, who believe in it. Mm -hmm. There's been campaigning around it. But in the end, this is going to be a brutal spending review. So I think there will be reductions. I don't think it will disappear. Um, but I think the way it's managed will probably change. Okay. So, I mean, in terms of, um, you talked about risks there, so I mean, thinking about opportunities as well, I mean, surely in spite of that, you know, there must be opportunities in terms of the shift towards greater devolution. I mean, what are, you, what are your views yeah. on that? Well, I think devolution is probably the most important thing to focus on at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, it seems to me that you go around the country and there are, in different places, mm -hmm. there's a really good understanding of what community learning is for, how it fits, what it delivers, who it delivers to and yeah. with, and how it contributes to different agendas. And mm -hmm. it does seem to be that Biz Skills Funding Agency are thinking about kind of devolving commissioning yeah. of the adult skills budget as well as community learning budget. That's mm -hmm. not certain, but that's kind of what the rumour mill is saying. I think that's pretty likely, really. You know, take out the apprenticeship money um, and then devolve the rest. Mm -hmm. Now, what the opportunity there, of course, is in a good area where you've got a good relationship with the local authority, good understanding of what community learning delivers, then I think there's a real, really good future. Conversely, there'd be some dangers, you know, where people don't understand it, perhaps there's not a strong yeah. service because the funding's low. I think So I think it's kind of risks and opportunities. Where yeah. it works well, it could be fantastic. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, that's that's the key thing, isn't it? Because obviously from NIAS's point of view, we've been undertaking a lot of activity mm. to raise the profile of community learning and explain more about it. So, I mean, what more do you think can be done in terms of helping society generally understand more about what community learning is and what it's all yeah, about? Yeah, well, I, look, I think there needs to be a national approach. That's mm. why we proposed the National Community Learning Trust, because sure, we yeah. thought if you've got a national framework... Mm -hmm that describes the kind of range of things that happen mm -hmm. and all the good practice out there, because there's fantastic practice out sure, there. Yeah, you know, whether that's linking up with health or family learning with schools or well-being and, and, and social care or whether it's linking up with skills and employment or all of those things, sure, yeah. or with libraries or with heritage, you know. Um, setting out that framework nationally and the benefits that accrue, I think, is really, really important. So we'll keep pushing to make sure there is that national policy lead and we think there needs to be somebody, and we'll try and fill that space to share good practice, to kind of push and cajole and encourage local authorities and LEPs to think carefully about this. Mm -hmm. But at a local level, we need people out there to really capture the evidence about what they're doing and, ma and make sure they're proving Definitely. the impact. You know, So Definitely. public health's a really, really obvious one. Mm -hmm. Family learning's a really obvious one. And the links to the care... Um, concerns that everybody's got at local level but also the linkages with other forms of learning so you know it, it, we know it engages people mm -hmm. and it engages people and most people once they're engaged in learning want to do more well where do they go how do they get into learning that helps them get a decent job and good pay exactly. it might not be why they started but often mm -hmm. that's why they want to 
continue. Yeah, sure. And like you said, the more examples that actually we can present collectively yeah. in terms of the impact of yeah. that, particularly where it can demonstrate cost savings, yeah. that's going to be increasingly important. Um, and I think in terms of sharing this with the wider world, we need to request that if people do have examples of the impact of community learning, if they can please, if you can please tweet them to at NiaceHQ, that would be fantastic. Yeah. And the other thing about it, of course, is, is trying to capture those savings. You know, so the mm. The fantastic citizens' curriculum pilot we did in Rochdale, yeah. where, where we know that Rochdale Council can evidence the savings they made in, in other budgets with, yeah. through, with no additional cost. So this is yeah. community learning, helping to save money for GPs, for social Absolutely. services, for police, etc. Absolutely. And very exciting, of course, that NIACE is leading uh, on the BIS-funded work uh, that will result in the Community Learning Impact Summit yeah. Yeah. in January and uh, also regional workshops next yeah. year. So um, thank yeah. you for your time. Thanks very much, Suzanne. See you soon.